E-L-L. Either you're ready or I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. We going? Uh, yeah. Happy Friday, everybody. It's the last Friday in February, almost exactly the first day of spring, officially. Mm -hmm. So, technically. <laughs> technically, meteorologically spring. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gearing up here, got a lot of go stuff going on uh, in Woodsmith land. And the big thing is next week at this time, we'll be less than a day away from starting our first in-person class right here in the Woodsmith shop. We're calling it our weekend shop class, oddly enough. And we're gonna be building the auxiliary vise that Chris talked about last week. Still have a couple of spots left if you're interested in joining us for that. Three. Uh, we have three spots left for that. Uh, Chris will be teaching, our very own Mark Hopkins will be assisting, and Steve Johnson, whom you've all seen on previous lives, will be there. So if you wanna sign up, uh, please go to woodsmithshop.com weekend and take a look at uh, signing up for this class and maybe a couple of the other ones later on down the road too. Uh, Dylan's teaching one, John and Logan got one, I'm doing one. So Mark's got another one coming up after that in April on building a tool chest. So I think we're gonna start by um, all the activity today here in the shop has all been down on this end. So I think we'll start with Dylan and catch up on the workbench. Bill, below, sorry, two yep. spots are made. Two spots. Wow, get them fast. Get them. They're going quick. Mm -hmm. Hi everybody, um, welcome. We are working on, I guess in this quadrant, we're working on the uh, Nicholson style workbench. I think last week we were in, certainly not in any state close to this. So we're kind of working towards a finishing pro uh, product here, um, which is nice to kind of have the extra bench space considering I've taken over probably every rolling cart in the shop um, within the vicinity. So. At least the ones John has to claim. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Nothing's disappeared yet. So it's nice again to have another working surface. Um, right now I'm kind of in the phases of working on the vice chop. So I've been doing a lot more of the, the drilling and then the mortar scene out for uh, not only the, um, the wooden screw, but also for the uh, wooden parallel guide here to, again, to keep it from binding. So uh, definitely a very crucial element in the construction of this, just again, to make sure everything is flush plumb and aligned so that um, you can get an even clamping pressure on your work pieces in the vise. So, and that's the Lake Erie? Yes, so uh, the vise screw that we chose to use is, uh, is a Lake Erie um, vise screw. Um, they make these in a couple of different lengths depending on whether you're doing a wagon vise, uh, tail vise, or even a face vise. So I think this is one of the face vise or one of part of the twin screw set that you can get. So, um, and it is silky smooth. It is. It's, like, that's unbelievable. I mean, it's, it, it probably, I mean, it's, it started off as one piece of rock maple. I mean, it's beautifully done. I'm guessing they did it with a uh, fourth axis on a CNC machine. Um, high polish, it works really well. Um, underneath here, you can't really see on the back side, they provide you with uh, what would be equivalent to like a nut that goes, that um, allows that to function. It's fastened on the back side there. Mm -hmm. That did get modified a little bit. Um, but really to kind of mimic the shape, and I realized that was kind of a, a futile effort considering not something you don't see anyway. But again, there's a little bit of a curve on the back side of it to kind of match the, um, the curves that are going on the, the, the aprons of the side of the bench. So um, again, like I said, right now, I'm just kind of in the stages of uh, getting everything fit for the vise, and then I'm gonna go back. Um, the, the base will get painted. Um, we've got a few paint colors picked out. Um, if anybody's watching and would like to see a certain color, um, I would love to consider it. Um, this will have to end up coming back apart just, again, to paint it. Um, and then once I get painted and reassembled, I'm going to go back and make sure that my both, both aprons and then my top are all uh, flush. So I'll do, be doing some servicing on that as kind of the last um, uh, element or construction part of the, the workbench. So um, I do like the beach. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the beach looks sharp. I think once it gets warmed up with a little, uh, whether we butcher block oil or seal a cell, so I'm just kind of give a little protective film. Um, I think it will look really nice. So, You know what I wanted to try okay. for a while? Is to service my workbench top on a toothing plane. Okay. So I've seen some guys in some traditional uh, European style benches, English style benches, mm -hmm. that they actually would just scrub them with a toothing plane. Oh, and it sure. gives the top kind of textured feel, right. but it helps keep 
work surface or your work piece from sliding, sliding around. Yeah. yeah. So I know, I always thought that'd be kind of an interesting thing to try out. Yeah. So if anybody's tried it out, let us know. Yeah. I have an MDF top on my workbench, and I don't think you, it would work. You could do that. It would look really weird. So, <laughs> oh, I will say the one other thing I forgot to mention that is left to do in the construction are my uh, two uh, longer stretchers that are uh, they'll be attached at an angle. I think we really addressed this and may have shown going. Is it going in the front too? Yeah, yeah they go in the front. There'll be opposing back. angles on them. Like that. Um, and they're uh, lap jointed in. Um, they're they're dovetailed lap joints essentially going on the front and they just alternate so you kind of have a crisscross cross pattern as if this thing needed any more structure to it. Um, again, it was just kind of a, an aesthetic choice but also a, a structural choice to just kind of make this a, a bomb proof bench. So, um, are, these in, are these in slots here? Uh, these are counterboard by maybe I don't know, an A316. Gotcha. An so, so everything can move a little bit? Right. And then you'll notice too, there's actually, I left a little bit of space in between the sure. planks as well to let it just kind of move. Um, just big enough for like little tacks and nails to get in there and never right. come out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 well, I was thinking, it's like a self filtering bench then, right? When you get right. sawdust on it, you just shake mm -hmm. it a little bit and mm -hmm. it funnels down. It's like a sieve, yeah. 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 Very much so. Shake, not power supply. That's for sure. <laughs> That's but. how the shakers do it. Yep. Right. Yeah, other than uh, some of the earlier stages of some future designs, um, this is kind of what I've been focusing my attention on for the week. So again, I guess check back next week and we'll uh, figure out where I, where I end up. So, and uh, I think we're gonna move over to Mark. Yep. Mark, how's the bookcase? Hey everyone, the bookcase for the most part is all done. All I've got to do is uh, put some finishes on there and assemble the drawer. So I've been working on the drawer today. If you come around here, John, I'll show you around this side. So the drawer, there's going to be the drawer face. And then we're going to use walnut for the, the sides and the back of the drawer. So we're going to do half blind dovetails to see. I cut these using a router table and then the sockets just using a good old fashioned mallet and chisel. So get that assembled and then put the actually put the inlay on the front of this, the string inlay, which is going to be the same as this guy. So I'll work on that after, well I'll do the inlay before I assemble the drawer. And then we're going to work on putting some finishes on it, which we're not sure what we're doing yet. Dylan did some samples. So here's some samples. I think, what did you do here Dylan? Just a couple of different oils? Yeah, I think uh, one of them was just a bunch of black oil, the other one was a, a, a walnut or a medium walnut from a, a, which was, was a Danish oil, and then there's a, um, a cherry gel stain on there, but they all look okay. pretty close. I guess the center one does have a little more red to it, but we didn't want to, um, we didn't want any sort of stain to kind of distract from the fact that there is in like there, we want that certainly to be highlighted. Um, in the, color contrast between the natural wood colors is you know, kind of the, the subtlety we're going for. So again, I really just wanted to enhance, we want to enhance the, the, um, the coloration of the wood rather than yep. mask it, so. Oh, I like the color of mahogany too, straight up, without yep. having to be heavily stained or dyed or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when it looks as nice as that. Yeah, yeah. Uncut, under Linda mahogany. Linda says medium walnut. What's that? Linda says medium walnut. Medium walnut. medium walnut. How does she know which one's the medium walnut? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I, honestly, on camera, they're probably almost identical. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Medium walnut. Yep. Could have run the dark walnut. Too. Yep. Yep. So that's where I'm at. So check back in next week and we'll be done. Or if you're here for the class, you can see it in person. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Ooh, exactly. Yep. But only two more people. Right. That's why, that's why I put it around the corner to my workbench. <laughs> So Linda, sign up for the class. Yeah. There you go. Yes, Linda. Okay, you got anything? Uh, yeah. I mean, do you have stuff? Yeah, I left my door over in my office. So yeah. I, I mean, we got time. We got yeah. Time. Yeah. Just go across this. This should be long enough. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. So Phil and I right now have a mess on our bench back here. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to talk about what happened no. with some TV show stuff that we may or may not have extra sides to a step stool. Um, but there's a large pile of walnut. 
Um, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made, but you know what? Happy little mistakes, right? Right. We don't make mistakes. We have happy little accidents. Right. Isn't that Bob Rossism? Yeah. And my dog had a happy little accident this morning yeah. on the kitchen that's floor. That I, had. I think yeah. that's my youngest <laughs> name. <laughs> uh, but no, I, so I've had this problem lately, and I, you guys heard me talk about it, about turning. And not only do I love to turn now, I also love turning free stuff. Um, so I've been kind of uh, keeping my eye out on Facebook and Craigslist on uh, trees that get cut down. So this happened to be a cherry tree that was getting taken down. Uh, and I messaged the guy and he said, yeah, there's a couple of smaller pieces left. So I grabbed a couple pieces and sliced them into some cherry blanks. And I have one on the lathe right now that I'm going to turn into a bowl when we're done. Um, so that's really all I have. I mean, I, I have other projects that I need to get done. Right, and maybe we'll make a day over this weekend to come in and work on them and try to get them done. But you know what? Sometimes they're soul therapy, where you <laughs> just do stuff that makes you feel good, and turning yeah. makes me feel good. So yeah, yeah. So we also have some fun, uh, random quarter sawn pieces of cherry. So maybe Phil or maybe myself will make spoons. some spoons. It'll be fun too. So yeah. Okay, other events that we have coming up are the is the next Woodsmith Live online seminar. Mm -hmm. That'll be March 19th at 11 a.m. And Mark's going to be teaching that on top router jigs. So you want to sign up for that. Don't forget to sign up for the all-access annual pass yep. so that you can get uh, access to the seminars that we've already done for the year, the two of them, and then the ones for the rest of the year. So you can be pre-registered for those. Uh, John has a stool he wants to show. You want to show your stool? Uh, let's wait until it's sprayed and finished. Okay. 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 I saw you Next carry week. it in. Yep. We'll spray it. Okay. So stay tuned for our little project that John's been working on. And other than that, I think everybody have a really good weekend. It's supposed to be really warm be here. Beautiful here in Iowa. Yeah. Lots of people out washing their cars and then it'll rain. Yeah. So. And then everything will be muddy. Yep. All right. We'll see you around next week. Thanks everybody.